if you shower or brush your teeth or try to make your hair look presentable, here's some good news. Dollar Shave Club has a lot of stuff to help you out. Dollar Shave Club delivers everything you need to look, feel, and smell your best. Shampoo, conditioner, body wash, toothpaste, hair gel, even a wipe that leaves your tush feeling tingly clean. All of Dollar Shave Club's products are made with top-shelf ingredients that won't break your budget. You'll feel the difference. Plus, shipping is free with your membership. And here's a great way to try a bunch of Dollar Shave Club's products for just 5 bucks. You can get their Daily Essential Starter Set. It comes with Body Cleanser, One Wipe Charlie's, their amazing butt wipes, and their world-famous shave butter. And their best razor, the Six Blade Executive. Keep the blades coming for a few more bucks a month and add in a shampoo, toothpaste, or anything else you need. Check it all out at dollarshaveclub.com slash chat. That's dollarshaveclub.com slash chat. Independent in thought and punk rock in life. It's the Chad Benson Show. This was a nationwide investigation of enormous scope and of the greatest importance. Our investigation ranged from New York to Delaware to Maryland to the District of Columbia to Florida to California. Christopher Ray, right there, director of the FBI. Guess what, guys? They got him. They got him. Who is he? That's the question. I know his names. I know his name. Uh, I'm just going to say it once. I'm, in fact, I'm just going to give you his first name. Caesar. That's it. Caesar. Oh, come on, Chad. Give us the whole name. Caesar Sayak. That's it. That's it. Not going to say it anymore. I, 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 you know I don't do mass shooters or any of these things. This is who he is. He is... Uh, uh, he's out there is maybe the best way to describe him. When asked... Christopher Ray, do you have the right dude? We do believe that we've caught the right guy, uh, but we also know that this is an ongoing investigation and there's a lot of work still to be done. Yes, and who is he? He's 56, he's got numerous uh, arrests, including another bomb plot against judges in 2002. This guy is uh, out there. He is definitely somebody who it was an avid partisan but in truth more than that and this is something i want everybody to understand he's not well the van alone said everything you need to know he's not well it's not his family said roids i saw him they they put a picture up and i've posted it on uh facebook chad benson show and twitter check it out when i saw him At 56 years old, with his massive guns, I said, roid rage. Then I read his cousin said he's a lost soul whose brain has been rotted by roids. And I'm like, yeah, I get that. It is, he is, uh, he is nuts, I think is the best. The van alone, like I said, the van alone says a lot. If you haven't seen the van, it is on... Pretty much everywhere. You can check out the Chad Benson Show page and it's on Facebook and, and Twitter. He's got all kinds of things, all kinds of wacky stickers and pictures of Pence and like and Trump everywhere, including one sticker that I'm just, ah, oh, it is Trump on a tank and the tank is blasting. It is, I, I, I couldn't even begin to describe, it doesn't do, the picture will do justice, me describing it will not and he wasn't good at whatever he was trying to do most of the bombs so far that they've recovered none of them seem to be operable and how they caught him uh well it's not hard either based on their initial analysis they uncovered a latent fingerprint from one of the envelopes containing an ied that had been sent to congresswoman maxine waters there you go they had his phone for a couple days they kind of knew what was going on uh, it wasn't really th- – this wasn't one of those situations where, like, they they kind of had it all sussed out. They were ready to roll, and uh, they did. And now it's they're going to start breaking things down. they got to go over every single thing they possibly can, and it starts with him, and they'll work it backwards. They are going to learn everything about that person, going all the way back as far as they have to, maybe to their childhood, trying to figure out what led this person to – 
being involved in this type of situation? I mean, once again, we still don't know exactly what this person's role is. Clearly, they had a role if they are now in custody. Yeah, and the role is this guy's it. Now, how much is insanity part of it? Plenty. I think when uh, I don't think he's all there. Now, what happens? Well, they'll go through all of that stuff. But now that the story is over and the fear factor potentially goes away, because he may have somebody else to work with him, but I doubt it. Living in the van by the sounds of not only they arrested him, they arrested his van, uh, which is the, the van alone. Like I said, the van and the stickers, the more stickers you have like that, the more chances are you're not all there. And if you're living in a, con- you know, a, a van conversion, you know, super 1980s, 70s style, You are a suspect in everything, everything. And (laughs) uh, and some of the stuff I've been reading about the guy, apparently he was like a failed Chippendale-ish kind of dancer. He worked at a strip club. He uh, is Native American and he has had a couple like catering companies. He is uh, he's just this guy has uh, some, you know, I mean, he's got I think he's got some serious, serious issues. And the rhetoric is what we're going to be talking about, because now that that everybody can calm down, now we can get back to doing what we like to do best, which is finding blame and attacking everybody as much as possible. Everybody's got a part to play in the rhetoric, not just in the singular thing, right? Like, take this out of it. This is a singular thing that this guy has done. Remember what happened? A Bernie supporter shot up a congressional baseball practice, almost killing Steve Scalise. Because he was pissed at the Republicans because Bernie Sanders apparently told him that Republicans were going to kill a bunch of people with their health care plans. So did I blame Bernie? Did anybody? Was Ben Shapiro blame Bernie? Nope, 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 nope. Nobody blamed Bernie. No, because that guy's actions are on his own. That guy's actions are his. But I do think the rhetoric has gotten out of control. And whether it's Bernie or Trump or any or Hillary, any of these things, no matter what you say. You have to take into account nowadays that there is 0.1%. Not 1%, 0.1%. When you look how many people are out there, though, that can add up to a lot of people, thousands of people, who don't quite understand the craziness that goes on in many ways is kind of like a joke. They don't get the, the, the... the, they're not in on the joke, so they don't quite get it, and they take it to heart. I think Trump, being the president of the United States, and John Kasich said it best. He's got the he's got the biggest uh, bully pulpit of all. I think he and the bullhorn. I think he needs to tone it down. This is what he said when asked about that. Well, I think I've been toned down. You want to know the truth? I could really tone it up uh, because, as you know, the media has been extremely unfair to me and to the Republican Party. Now, has the media been unfair? Somewhat. I mean, it, let's be real. If we're just if we're being honest, and, and I like honesty here, have they been? Has the coverage been fair? No. Did he get six months or a year? No. In fairness to them, has Trump gone after them, giving as good as he gets? Absolutely. But yes. There should be some toning down. I, I, and, and I would like to see it. I would like to see the president of the United States, who is my president. He's your president, whether you like it or not. I didn't vote for him, and maybe you didn't vote for him. But I tell you what, I want him to be successful, but I also want him to lead. And at some point in time, you've got to be the one that says, you know, I'm going to take a step back. And it, it, and I said to somebody, look, calling somebody Pocahontas. Well, I think it's asinine and stupid, you know, in the office. It's one thing for us opinion heads to joke around and stuff like that. <coughs> or comics to do stuff like that. It's one thing. It's another thing when you've got the, the leader, you know, of the free world doing some of the things he does. I find that to be ridiculous. But when it comes to blaming somebody for their actions... That, to me, is where I just like, you know what? That guy, This guy's actions are his own actions. There's no blame. There's no anything. Uh, if you look at what happened to Steve Scalise, that was from a supporter of a different party. Uh, if you look at what happened to numerous of these incidents, they were supporters of others. Now, I'm just really proud of law enforcement. Yeah. And like I said, 
I would like him to read the room better. I would like him to maybe tone it down a little bit. Here's what you're going to get. The exact opposite of that. Trump will be louder. Trump will be more vocal. Trump will be in everybody's face because they'll look at it as a one-off. And I think for all intents and purposes, it is a one-off. But it still is frustrating. It really, really is frustrating. And I think a lot of you out there get, because I've got a lot of people who are sending me text messages and stuff. And and here's the other thing. And I'm going to say this to you right now. I have no time or want to debate your hoax, your conspiracy theories, your wackiness of the Pelosi and the Schumers of the world have set this up and this guy's just a stooge. I have no time for that. This guy's got problems. Right. If we're going to talk about that, he's mentally, I believe he's got serious. The van alone says mental problems. But if you if you see some of the things his family has said about the fact he's a lost soul and roids have destroyed his brain and and that, you know, he said at one time his family fought the commie. I mean, there's all kinds of stuff. This guy's got some serious, serious issues. And that's that's the reality of this. But I have no I have no want to sit here and play. It's all a hoax. It's all baloney. I have none, no time for that. No time for that. 323-538-2423. At Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. You can tweet at us. Love hearing from you. God, even today, like like literally an hour ago, I probably have about 40 or 50 IMs and stuff like that and, and text messages of people comparing the van. Look at this and look at this. And I'm just like, I've got no time for it. Right. I don't want to sit here and debate because you want it. This guy's like, I hope it's not true that he's a Trump supporter. I said, the guy's a Trump supporter. I said, but you're looking at it like this is all Trump. No, he's mentally disturbed. The key word is mental. Right. Disturbed. Those are the words. That's what this is. But somehow Democrats didn't win anything today. The media didn't win anything today. They'll feel like they did, like they got a, a chance to go up on a high horse even higher than they already put themselves and in the, in, uh, above all the blame and all of the nonsense below. But nobody gets a prize. Tomorrow, there's nothing showing up inside of your mailbox that is some sort of the bombers not our, on our team trophy. This guy has issues. He does. And he has sat around and probably watched hours of Fox News and listened to all kinds of stuff and has been energized and, oh, and, 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 you know, somewhere along the line, he got in his head that these people were the enemy of Trump and he went after them. But it's not a hoax and it's not some, you know, like some huge conspiracy, but people are going to believe that, which shows me everything I need to know about a lot of those people. 323-538-2423. At Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. You can tweet at me. My pillow will be traveling with me this weekend. I'm actually taking my family. I got them some my pillows because I'm nice like that. They're going to love it. My mother has a tough time sleeping. I have a tough time sleeping. Last night, I slept on an awful bed in my travels that literally, I mean, a bed of nails would have been more comfortable. I still slept almost six hours, and the reason was my pillow. That's it, my pillow. It's a simple thing. It is a simple, simple thing, and it goes a long way. The energy I feel the next day because I get so many great hours of sleep, even though I have a limited time to sleep because I travel and I do so much, my pillow helps me maximize that. Blood pressure, it's great for you when you get a a great night's sleep. It shows you study after study. It helps heart health, blood pressure, things of that nature. 100% machine washable, dryable cotton, made in the USA, backed by a 10-year warranty. And right now, you can BOGO it. Buy one, get one free. You can literally get somebody a Christmas present, right? And get yourself a pillow. Oh, what a good idea. Yeah, how about that, huh? Buy one, get one free. How do you do it, you say? Call 800-983-4975. 800-983-4975. Or go to MyPillow.com, use promo code Benson, better night's rest, the world's most comfortable pillow. MyPillow.com, code Benson, MyPillow.com, code Benson. At Chad Benson shows your Twitter, C-H-A-D-B-E-N-S-O-N. Oh, I got a funny, hilarious urban word straight ahead, Chad Benson show. No snowflake zone. 
Uninformed opinions are in danger of melting. The Chad Benson Show. But let this be a lesson to anyone, regardless of their political beliefs, that we will bring the full force of law against anyone who attempts to use threats, intimidation, and outright violence to further an agenda. Quick draw McGraw right there. Or Jeff Sessions, up to you. Either one's kind of cartoonish. Uh, yeah, he, he talked about it. I don't care if you're a Trump supporter, whoever you are. If you do something like this, we're going to come for you hard. It's it's I, Watching the media and some of these people talk, it's like they were going to let this guy out free. Well, he's a Trump supporter. We're going to let him. No, they're going to go and prosecute the hell out of him. They are, as they should. And, and according, look, if he's got mental issues, then he should get mental help. Can we all agree? But if he's got some mental issues, maybe he needs some help. It's a sad situation, just like the guy who shot up the uh, the baseball game. If he's got some mental issues, then the best thing that we can do is find him some mental help. Where did this snap? Where did it go wrong? How did you get to the point? Where was this point where this guy it stopped being rhetoric and it became a must do i must defend the president i must attack his enemies i must come after him and it doesn't matter who is from the george soros's to the kamala harris's to the cory bookers to the tom steyers i've got to come after them to the two former presidents it's a must 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 win like somewhere it had to snap 323-538-2423 at Chad Benson Show your Twitter. You can tweet at us. Hey, let's let's take a deep breath, shall we? Each and every day at this time, I like to give you something that you can take, and I always like to end it on a funny when it comes to the weekends, because I do believe we need a little funny in our lives. We call this our urban word of the day. It's time for the urban word of the day, fam. What? Right now? Time to get a little more hip on the streets. I can't understand a word you're saying. Urban word of the day. I think this is hilarious. I don't know if you guys have seen that Google commercial where like people are showing pictures of like animals and people are filming it and they're getting the wrong animal. And it's hilarious. And we were talking about that when one of the uh, board ops here says, oh my God, that's like when we see raccoons and we call them trash pandas. <laughs> I just thought to myself, what? It's not a raccoon. That's a trash panda. You ever seen a trash panda? I'm like, I've totally seen a trash panda, but I thought they were raccoons. Now, in the streets, we call them trash pandas. And I'm like, give them a little street cred. Trash panda, your urban word of the day. Thank you for saying that and dated urban slang so that I'll understand you. That there was the urban word of the day. We damn stretched your cranium. We're concerned about people committing acts of violence under any motivation. Yeah. Period. Case closed. Don't care what it is. I don't care if it's you're in love with the Smurfs and they're you're mad because they're going off TV. Right? And that's the reason you're going to be angry. Any motivation. But it's just, it's crazy. And people are still sending me their, their conspiracy theories. I do not have time for that. I will put you on mute. 323-538-2423. At Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. Oh, Megan Kelly is finally gone and it's not what you think. We'll talk about that in the caravan. It's moving. Chad Benson Show. Chad Benson Show. Independent in thoughts and punk rock in life. It's the Chad Benson Show. In a statement, NBC says, quote, Megyn Kelly today is not returning. Next week, the 9 a.m. hour will be hosted by other Today co-anchors. This after reports the past couple of days that Kelly and NBC were talking about her exit. On Tuesday, Kelly came under fire during a discussion about Halloween costumes and blackface. Okay, back when I was a kid, that was okay as long as you were dressing up as like a character. Yeah. Kelly apologized the next day, but many have felt Kelly and NBC were never a good fit and that NBC wasn't happy with the ratings. And that's what it really is. I'm going to tell you guys this right now. This was a culmination of a lot of things. First, wasn't a good fit. It wasn't. Period, case closed, end of story. Was never a good fit. She didn't get in, uh, into the in crowd over there. 
a lot of the other talent and people behind the scenes weren't thrilled by her. She came over with tons of fanfare and a lot of money, and the ROI on the investment wasn't very good. And they said to themselves, even if they were making some money, which I heard they were making some money, there was a lot more money they were leaving out there. It just didn't really work, and they would rather get rid of her now and pay her off a portion or everything and allow her to go do whatever, and it was fine. Did what happened the other day is stupid. I think we can all agree with this, right? You know, somewhere along the line, we've crossed this line of of, of insanity when it comes to this politically correct uh, craziness out there. But somewhere out there, people who are reasonable on both sides of the aisle realize what this is about, right? The people who feel emboldened as if this was the reason that she was fired was singularly this episode and this situation. That scares me. Because we know arbitrarily they go after anybody for anything and they come as hard as they possibly can. And I, it gets frustrating. It is. I mean, it is, it is so frustrating that we have this kind of world like this. But before everybody reads into the, oh, this is because of it, it wasn't. It wasn't. <laughs> she had some issues. Uh, I I think, and I'm going to go out there and say this, uh, a little tough to work with. I'm 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 a little tough to work with at times, um, you know. And when you're liked, right? So when you're liked, when people like you, they'll come to your defense, so you can get another try. When you have huge ratings and or, but most importantly, ratings mean very little if your revenue is massive. Rate, I've worked at stations where ratings have been through the roof and I've seen people whose revenue wasn't there and they've gotten rid of them. And I've worked places where ratings have been average to poor across the board and the revenue was massive and they've stuck around. Ideally, you'd like to have both. But the truth is, revenue matters, and she was uh, she wasn't all that in a bag of chips when it came to revenue. It was just not a good fit. And I don't know what she's going to do next. She's got all kinds of things she can do. The money's there; she can go start her own thing. And I and you're seeing more and more people do that because you're seeing more and more people step away from the traditional establishment kind of media because they want to go and be able to control their world where they're not beholden to a giant conglomerate of a bunch of, you know, stiffs and suits and people who are telling you you've got X, Y, and Z uh, as far as time, you know, and you've got to do all of these things. There are certain constraints. And Oh, by the way, these are the things you can't say. These are the things you can't joke about. And if you do get joked, you can get the phone call and can you change it? And you can, a lot of people are stepping away from that, and I understand. You know, I'm blessed to be in the situation I am working with the companies I work with. I'm blessed because they don't really – they just let me do my thing. But I see why people do it, especially people that have been burned are just like, yeah, I'll go do it myself. I will. And, I, and I've talked to a few big YouTube stars and, and who are – who have turned down, one of which turned down a major lucrative deal with Disney because he's – He's like, uh, no, I don't want to be beholden to anybody. Uh, I make enough money doing this. And uh, while Disney would have given him a, a much larger exposure, he also realized what comes with that. What comes with that is certain constraints, and you just can't, can't get away from it. 323-538-2423. At Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. You can tweet at us. Well, they are coming. Yes, indeed. It is the caravan, and they are cruising. From Mexico to here, and apparently there is two more behind, not quite as big yet, uh, and uh, they're heading on out. The migrant caravan we have been following has come to a stop in the city where we have seen the migrants recuperating and trying to recover from what's been a very long journey. It is a long journey. I don't think people realize this. Like, I I walk a lot, so uh, let's just see how many miles I've walked this week just for... Since I think it started on Monday is when they started doing the uh, – so far today, I'm about, oh, five miles of walking, well over 10,000 steps, right? So for the week, 
you know, I'm heading towards, oh, geez, about 35 miles. It will probably by the time I get to Sunday. So go Sunday, Sunday, right around 35 miles, maybe a little bit longer. They're going to walk 1,100 miles from where they are now. And you've got kids, you've got all kinds of people, man. You're committed. You're absolutely 100% committed, committed, committed in something like this. And this is going to continue. The weekend where the bomber will be front and center, the rhetoric will be front and center, the arguing will be front and center, the blame game will be front and center. Monday it'll be a little bit more, and that's kind of will be the tail end of putting it to bed, and then you'll hear little things here and there about it. But what will start to happen is come Monday afternoon, Tuesday, then we'll have a week till midterms. This, I believe, will start to become something big, and this is very interesting. I want you guys to listen to this, all right? Because this this right here, I find this to be absolutely some of the most racist, horrific things, according to the left, that you will ever hear. And these three people are leading the charge in this hatred. Illegal aliens should not be treated the same as people who entered the U.S. legally. I voted uh, uh, numerous times when I was a senator to spend money to build a uh, a barrier to try to prevent um, illegal immigrants from coming in. Uh, we simply cannot allow people to pour into the United States undetected, undocumented, unchecked. Those three people who I believe have gone on to do some things in politics, uh, Hillary Clinton, she went on to uh, annoy us and never go away, but she was Secretary of State, and thank you for your service. Uh, Senator as well, First Lady. Uh, The last gentleman uh, was a senator at the time when he said that, and he went on to do something else. I I think he wrote a book, but then he was president for eight years, so there was that. And then the first guy, of course, is Chucky from the Chucky movies, and he's done several sequels. That see how they change here? See see the game? I mean, that's that that is the game. We how is the wind blowing? Quick! Oh yeah, it's going that direction. So I need to be in this direction. Marriage equality or traditional marriage? Right now, I'm all traditional. Mm, I could grow in a few years, and depending on how, which way the wind's blowing, uh, I could be on the uh, marriage equality. It's the game that people play, and it's that's how it's being used, and it's frustrating. It is absolutely frustrating. Uh, we need to figure out what we're going to do with this. And my frustration comes from the sense that we know it's coming, and this is a small thing. The caravan compared to the overall, but the optics of it are big. And as they're coming here, what we're going to have is two groups of people, Republicans and Democrats, who are going to argue. It's two people reaching for a glass of milk. Milk falls over. The glass falls to the ground. One of them says, you did that. You need to clean it up. The other one says, no, you did that. You need to clean it up. And then it goes on and on and on. And all the while, the glass of milk and the milk itself lays on the floor. And it doesn't go anywhere. And they argue over it. And eventually, the people will arrive. And what has been happening will continue to happen. And that is the frustration that so many of us feel out there. That is it. And the Democrats, they play the game. They play the game. Remember what they said, and this is what Tucker Carlson said, because if you dare talk about a wall or if you dare talk about immigration reform in a way that they don't like, you get called certain things. A nation of laws that must be ignored. Disagree with any of that, by the way? Do you think nations need borders in order to be nations? The cable news geniuses have a message for you. Shut up, racist. It gets Trump's nativist base very, very excited every day. And they look at these people as less than human. They believe that those folks are are less than human. And they believe that they don't deserve asylum. They believe that, you know, the kids in cages was a net benefit for this country. Donald Trump wants you to know that he hates the same people you hate if you hate Muslims, if you hate black people, if you hate anyone who lives south of the Rio Grande. Yeah, but we heard what the others said, right? Like, you know, that they shouldn't come here and they just can't. It's it's a game. It's it's an absolute game. And depending on which way the weather 
and the wind is blowing. It's the way that they're going to go. Uh, I don't hate any of these people. I, in fact, empathize with these people. In many ways, I can look at it and, and think to myself, my God, we have people who have been stuck in the Midwest and, and, and in the Rust Belt for years who can't get off their asses at times to go, hey, maybe I need to go somewhere else where there's actual uh, work and potential and they'll stay there. And I, and I can be honest and say, you know what, I'm not a big fan. Maybe you should go somewhere, right? If it's not working for you there, maybe go to another pond. But they have the right to do that. These people don't have a right to come in our country. Some of these people probably do need asylum. I'm not some idiot that don't think that some of these people are some, oh, these people are all just here. No, some of these people probably are in potential danger because of the corruption, because of a lot of stuff that's going on down there, the the gang warfare, the drugs, all of that stuff. Yes, all of them. Mm. But it's a game. And nobody is going to do anything about it. And come December 1st-ish, give or take a few days, they will arrive, some in Mexico, some in Arizona, some in California, and then they'll be given their you know, court dates, and a good majority of them will show up, but that won't be for a couple years because they're so backed up. And we'll be talking about the next caravan a month after that. 323-538-2423, at Chad Benson Show us your Twitter. You can tweet at us. Love hearing from you. Twitter! We've got a poll up about monsters. Monsters, you say? Yes. Good monsters, not bad monsters. And by that, I mean, you know, these people we call horror villains. Michael Myers, Jason Voorhees, people of that nature. And my question of the day is, who's your favorite? Michael Myers leads the pack. Jason number uh, is, is dead last. He's only got nine. Freddy with 23%. 32. A lot of people saying, what about Dracula? What about Frankenstein? Who was Frankenstein was not his name. His name was just Monster. But, you know, they didn't really give him that. His name's Clint. (laughs) That's a horrible name for a monster, but whatever. We'll call him Clint. Uh, You know, Creature from Black Hood, Mummy. Dracula and Freddy Krueger. The reason I think people like Freddy Krueger and Dracula is because they talk. Right? They talk. And that's... Like, cool. Like, the Wolfman just went, right? When he became the Wolfman in those old movies. And Frankenstein just, ooh. Dracula was like, hey, check it out. Like, I'm a European, like, you know, dude hanging out in a castle. And I can make chicks fall in love with me with, ooh, like, the, you know, with my, ooh. And then you got Freddy, who was, like, always talking smack. And so I think they, they have the edge in, in a weird way. But there's something about Michael Myers and that mask And just the fact that even if you talk to him, there's something about the weirdness of not being able to get through to him. 323-538-2423. At Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. Who do you think? Who is your go-to monster? Who is your go-to monster? 323-538-2423. At Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. Car Shield is not my go-to monster, but it's my go-to as a just-in-case uh, it is incredible. Had a buddy who had to get something replaced in his car because he has something a little bit newer. It has all kinds of gizmos and gadgets. Uh, it was going to be about, well, I, I think he said about 1200 bucks, And it was just some sort of sensor. Car Shield took care of everything. Car Shield is great. It is amazing. And they've got plans for everything that you could think of when it comes to whatever it is your car may need, how you need coverage. All you have to do is go to Car Shield. Uh, dot com and check it out for yourself. They've got all kinds of plans. It's expensive nowadays to fix your car, so why not have somebody out there that protects you as a just in case? And that's where Car Shield comes in. Twenty four seven roadside assistance, a rental car for free while your car's being fixed. And oh, speaking of fixed, you choose the shop. You do. Take it to the dealership, take your favorite mechanic, they get it done. Go to carshield.com, carshield.com, use code Benson to save ten percent or call eight hundred car sixty one hundred. Eight hundred car sixty one Hundred mention code Benson saves ten percent. A deductible may apply. At Chad Benson shows your Twitter C H A D B E N S O N is the Chad Benson Show. Experiencing separation anxiety? <laughs> That's dumb. Check out Chad twenty four seven at his website chadbensonshow.com. And on iTunes, free. The Chad Benson Show. Show. Never feel lonely again.
you still have a chance to be a winner, winner with your old chicken dinner. The game is similar to Mega Millions. The ticket is two bucks. There are six numbers drawn. Your odds actually slightly better than Mega Millions to hit the jackpot. One in 292 million. But like the Mega Millions jackpot, mathematics and statistics professor emeritus at Loyola University of Chicago, Martin Buntinas, says your odds don't improve much the more tickets you buy. Statistically, it's essentially zero. It, it's sort of a, a funny thing, but you could say the, the chances are about the same whether you buy a ticket or not. There hasn't been a Powerball winner since mid-August. You know what people are starting to say, is this the new norm? Because that's kind of what p- we were talking about with the fact that these things are going up and up and up. And maybe that this is some sort of new normal when it comes to Powerball and these kind of things. Saturday's Powerball drawing of $750 million could potentially be the fourth biggest jackpot in U.S. history. I feel lucky. <laughs> Back in 2015, Powerball changed the odds of winning from 1 in 175 million to 1 in 292 million. And last year, Mega Millions followed suit, decreasing the odds from 1 in 259 million to 1 in 302 million. The longer odds mean jackpots get bigger. Yeah, isn't that crazy? Because you think if it's 1 in 302 million people, well, 302 million people aren't playing it. So you really, yeah, th- that's why the odds are getting bigger, and it causes there to be larger jackpots, which I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing. I mean, it's fun that we talk about it and we dream about it, but at the same time, you know, it's, uh, I don't know, lottery is an interesting thing. You know, I, I, it's it's fun to, to fantasize and to talk about those kind of things, but on the other side of stuff is I'm not quite sure the money really does all the things it's supposed to do. Uh, not only for, for the people, I'm sure if you win, you're you're excited, but for the cities and the states, hmm, I mean, we can question that. Three two three five three eight twenty four twenty three at Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. Woo, God, we flew. I like flying; it's fun. I'm not good at it because I don't have wings, but if I did, I'd be good. I'd be flying around. At Chad Benson Show is the Twitter. Take the poll. Who's your go-to monster? Is it Jason Voorhees, Michael Myers, Leatherface, Freddy Krueger, Dracula? Let me know via text or on the Twitter. It is the Chad Benson Show. This is the Chad Benson Show. Independent in thoughts and punk rock in life. It's the Chad Benson Show. This was a nationwide investigation of enormous scope and of the greatest importance. Our investigation ranged from New York to Delaware to Maryland to the District of Columbia to Florida to California. Yes, and they finally caught him. I give you one time that I say his name. Right? Caesar Sayoc, that's it. Won't say it again. 56, failed Chippendales dancer, body weightlifter, I, caterer, I, Native American. Uh, he's just, the guy's a mess. His family has said that he has uh, lost his mind. Uh, I think his cousin said he's a lost soul who has uh, has roid rage, basically, and it's rotted his brain. Uh, but a definite supporter of the old Trumpster there, but living in the van down by the auto zone, and it was quite the van. And we posted pictures of it on the Twitter, at Chad Benson Show, and you can check it out also on Facebook, Chad Benson Show. He's crazy. Is is I'm going to go with he's mentally not all there. That's what I'm going to say. Uh, and that he took the rhetoric that's out there and came hard. And you know what's funny is nobody wants to take any responsibility. So the media wants no responsibility, and they want to be able to go and say all the things they want to say about Trump because they don't like him or his policies and all those kind of things. Trump wants to say that I've done all these amazing things as far as I've toned it down, which is one of the things he said today. Well, I think I've been toned down. You want to know the truth. I could really tone it up. 
Uh, because, as you know, the media has been extremely unfair to me and to the Republican Party. Yeah. Well, I mean, at times they have been, uh, but there's also some fairness there. But they go overboard because that's what ha- that's what we have to do anymore, right? We no longer can have, and part of it is us. Part of it is we can't have a, a, a uh, we we can't have a normal conversation or some sort of the debate that's kind of a little bit deeper because we live in a soundbite world. And on top of that. You've got to be above the noise, meaning your noise has to be louder than everybody else's noise. Or nobody's going to pay attention because we've become so desensitized to, to so many things. It almost has to be like a train wreck right in front of you for anybody to pay attention. And that's kind of our fault. But everybody's got a part to play. I'm sure more than a few occasions I've been to visit. For that, I apologize. I'm sure for more than a few occasions, I have said stuff that that that, that I put a little mustard on, if you will, a little bit harder than I should have pushed. Uh, not much of a conspiracy, guys, so I won't go there. But I, I'm sure that on more than a few occasions, uh, anybody who's ever been in any of these businesses absolutely have. And both sides of the aisle are to blame, and the media is to blame. Let me tell you, when you go on these media shows, they'll tell you, hype it up. Don't be they they don't want you to be a a dull person. Well, let me tell you what happened. They don't want that. They want you to be loud. They want you to be controversial. They want you to do these kind of things. They do. Do I blame Trump for this guy's actions? No, no more than I blame the guy that uh did the shooting against the congressional Republicans baseball team that almost killed Steve Scalise. I can't blame Bernie Sanders for that. Bernie didn't do that. Bernie didn't do any of that. That guy's action was just because he was a Bernie supporter. And he said, oh, you know, the Republicans are coming to steal my health care and and it's going to kill millions of people. That was some of the things that the guy said that that, I, I can't blame that. That guy was mentally disturbed, as is this guy. First of all, the van alone says a little bit crazy. Secondly, the haircut alone says a lot of bit crazy. And the Royd side of things, don't discount the Royd rage. Don't discount that. Don't. And all weekend long, it is going to be, it's all Trump's fault. It's all Trump's fault. It's all Trump's fault. Donald Trump unleashed the dogs of hatred in this country from the day he declared he was running for president. And they've been snarling and barking at each other ever since. And it's just inevitable. There are going to be acts of violence that grow out of that. But they never want to hear that, hey, has this happened before as far as like, you know, has the Democrats said stuff? Why? Why? Because nobody wants it, it, The minute this happened, right, it, it, it reminds me of when there's a police shooting. Everybody wants to know what. Is the cop white? Was the guy black? There's a mass shooting. Was it an AR-15? Was it a terrorist? Do they have political affiliations? Because we want to start getting in our tribes like we're getting ready to fight, like we're warming up. All right, guys, let's get in our tribes. Let's all dig in here. It's time to get in our tribes now. You guys ready? You ready over there? You ready over there? You ready? Everybody ready? Okay. All right, everybody take your positions. (coughs) And everybody takes their positions. This is uh, Eric Erickson and uh, Katie Turn, who is at MSNBC, and uh, I think it was or CNN. I can't remember. They're all kind of the same to me. I don't really watch any of these new shows. Uh, getting into it. And I, Eric Erickson's a good dude. I've been out to WSB on more than a few occasions. A great guy. Works, uh, uh, you know, been very nice to me. And he's been a never-Trumper, by the way. He Let me tell you how bad it was for him and the world of Trump. He was kind of a never-Trumper when it was first starting. It kind of the, 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 the coined the phrase, and he wasn't a huge fan of Trump. He had to have people watch over him and his family, security and police, for days after a contentious uh, interview that they had. And it was not good. So it's not like this is a guy who's like, hey, by the way, Trump's my best friend in the world. But the rhetoric that's out there, everybody's got a part to play. And what I see is the media wants to say they've got no part in this. right? The media wants to say they've got no part in this. They're, They're on the moral mountain above everybody else, on the Mount Everest of moral mountains. The Republicans are the only ones to blame. The left side of the aisle wants to say they, too, are on the moral. They're on the Kilimanjaro of the moral mountain next to them. The K-7, they're right there looking over, saying, we've got no part to play. It is only the Republicans. I call Fui. 
protesters chasing people out of restaurants. I think both sides need to calm down, which is what well, one reason I think it, it's not very helpful right now is who started it. Both sides can say the other side did. Both sides need to stop turning the base over to the fringe and the angry mob and actually return to the better angels of ourselves and actually try to get things done. I agree with. I agree. Right. I absolutely agree. One hundred percent. With all due respect, sir, and I think that everyone has to take responsibility for their own actions and the own, their own way in which they respond to this presidency, etc. And I, I, don't, I don't condone anything that's happened to um, Susan Collins or Ted Cruz or anyone getting yelled out of a restaurant. I think that's abhorrent. Uh, but I do think it's pretty clear when you're talking about this toxic political environment that it did start with, <laughs> with mostly with Donald Trump in 2015. He, the- no, it didn't. We act like these people who are politicians somehow never said a bad thing to one another, somehow never argued one another, somehow never ginned up their base. Now, Donald Trump does it in a way that nobody's ever done it before. That I will concede. And the difference, though, is what has happened since that 2015-ish, even a little bit earlier than that, what has started to happen is the people have access to information instantaneously, can put things out there instantaneously, can react instantaneously, and they can allow their feelings to flow and their emotions to flow with very little repercussions whatsoever. That's a huge thing. I mean, I don't I th- I, I, we need to definitely talk about the fact that social media plays a massive part in the inundated of information, lies, BS, real stories, fake stories, half truths, uh, you know, stuff that, that that may be true. But it's definitely, you know, pushing the envelope of just trying to get you emotionally to react to something. And both sides have done it. And so what's happened over the last four, five, six, eight years is we've we've become so tribal. As both sides have started to move away from each other, the fringes is especially, not the, you know, you still have that center, the exhausted majority, the alt middle that we are, but both sides have started to move further away from each other. And as they've started to do that, they've gotten louder and louder and louder and louder and louder. And instead of us going, I'm a Democrat, I'm a Republican, let's argue, blah, 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 blah. Now what it is, is I'm a Democrat, you're an enemy. I'm a Republican, you're an enemy. That's how things have really started to change. Is we don't look at each other as, as you know, frenemies, if you will. We are strictly just enemies. Right. He's, and hold on, do I'm go back still going. to Barack also, Obama no, and stop. take a gun to a knife fight or no, to no, Hispanic no, no, no. voters that Republicans are enemies? Or do we go back to the Eric, Weather Underground in 1960 or to McVeigh in the 1990s? Have you ever heard a politician other than Donald Trump say, I'm so proud or, 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 or give a kudos to another politician who body slammed a reporter? Have you ever heard that from anybody else other than Donald Trump? No. Listen to how she's just breathe, breathe, breathe. What do I always say, though? Don't let Donald Trump live rent free in your head. I mean, how many times I say that? But this is what the left wants. The left wants to be able to say the things like they, they, they want to be able to say that we're we we are we're above reproach. No, everybody's got a part to play. I've said it over and over again. I want Trump to to to, to tone it down. He's not going to do it. He'll probably get louder. He's tone deaf in a situation like this. He's playing to his audience. He's playing to his base. He he he's he's going to do that over and over again. Okay, I mean, I, I, I'm going to sit here and criticize it because it drives me crazy. But to act as if he's the only one, that's completely disingenuous. Trump is a is a symptom of what's going on in this country. Your your blood pressure going up over Donald Trump right now is my a symptom blood pressure of what's going is going on in this up country. because he's, Both, he's he advocates violence or or he but, or he you know, celebrates this, violence. Donald for, Trump for is not to blame for, for the mass shooting against Republicans last year. You had re- Democrats saying that Republicans were killing people. Um, both sides are to blame. And if you're going to say it's just Donald Trump, what you're going to do is you're going to have 50 percent of the country say, you know what, she's not really interested in a solution. Yeah. You know, I just I just I I want us to be genuine and say there's plenty of blame to go around. But for whatever reason, we all want to be able to say it's not my guy. It's not my person. I get a trophy because it's on you as if and, and that is so sad. 
that we live in a world where we're celebrating it's somebody else that's 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 caused a problem. And I said today, uh, you know, because you get I, I've been inundated with conspiracy theories, which, by the way, if you send them to me, I just poo poo them aside. I don't care. I don't want to hear about it. I'll mute you uh, on because I, I just don't care. But somebody said, well, I just don't want to be blamed for all these kind of things because I like Trump's policies. And I said, that's the issue right there is you feel that you're getting blamed for something. Don't let it worry you. Just get on with your life. Who cares? This guy's nuts. The guy that did this, he's got issues. He's got real, real issues. Absolutely 100% issues. He lives in a van. They arrested him and his van. And I'm always wary of everybody with bumper stickers to that extent. 323-538-2423 Three two three five three eight twenty four twenty three at Chad Benson shows your Twitter. You could tweet at us. You should be wary of people like that. With that many bumper stickers. Goodness me! You should always be the number one suspect too in anything. If you have that many bumper stickers, coupled with the van conversion from the nineties, yeah, you are suspect number one for whatever. We had to arrest you. Why? I don't know, but we're it's probably pretty good. <laughs> we got a poll question up. Who's your favorite monster? Who is your favorite monster? Want to hear from you? 323-538-2423. At Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. Jason Voorhees, Michael Myers, uh, the Creature from the Black Lagoon, Godzilla. Let us know. Take the poll at Chad Benson Show. Hey, great organizations out there like AMAC who are out there on your behalf fighting for things like, uh, you know, I don't know, middle class tax cuts and keeping them around, fighting for small business owners. And they're doing it in a way that's incredible. And the benefits that I and, and more and more of you are texting me saying, man, these benefits are incredible. Uh, retail, restaurant, hotel discounts, all of these things are available to you with AMAC. And here's the great thing. If you're over the age of 50 and you're looking around, right, Med- Medicare is getting ready to have open enrollment. People are confused about this and they don't know what to do. They've got people there that will help you. Dedicated people. You'll get your own dedicated person who will help you walk through these things and i'm telling you it is incredible what they're able to do for you the benefits the political advocacy that's what amac will do for you they're going to let you join for free it's on me all you have to do is go to amac.us forward slash chad amac.us forward slash chad amac.us forward slash chad amac is better for you better for america at chad benson show is your twitter c-h-a-d-b-e-n-s-o-n it's the chad benson show Being antisocial sucks. Hang with Chad's friends on Facebook, The Chad Benson Show. And if you just need some alone time, head on over to Twitter at Chad Benson Show. Either way, we can't wait to meet the real you. The CDC says everyone over six months old should get the flu vaccine as soon as possible, calling it the best way to protect against influenza and its potentially serious complications. Health experts add that the newly released prescription pill Zofluza could help reduce the length and severity of flu symptoms in adults if taken at the first sign of flu symptoms. Yeah, it's huge. We've already had two kids die from it. And it. Y- y- we talk about like the bombs and we talk about the mass shootings. We talk. It's the little things that matter so much. We were so worried when we were kids, like, don't sit too close to the TV or go blind. Don't do this. Don't do that. Hey, put some baby oil and go outside. Right? Hey, yeah, yeah. Baby oil. Get a nice tan. Like, all these things. Like, we we worried about stuff we didn't need to worry about. This is something that we need to worry about. 80,000 people died last year because of the flu, and not all of them were six-month-old babies or 95-year-old people with compromised immune systems. There was a lot of people that were seemingly normal, healthy people who caught the flu, thought they could fight it off, couldn't, and paid the ultimate price. These are things that you step back and you go, oh, whoa, let's uh, maybe, maybe, maybe I need to uh, think about these kind of things. Now, like everything, when you go get a shot, you got to know that there's potential side effects. You always have to balance risks versus benefits when you talk about any treatment, any medication. And like Tamiflu, there are side effects here. The common ones, headache, a little GI distress, upset stomach. There have been some reports of some mood disturbances and some psychiatric issues that will be being followed. Yeah, so, I mean, but if if 10 million people get the shot and 
twenty five get it's it's worth the risk. I think. You're not saying that, Chad. You're not standing naked on the time top of a mountain screaming about Kentucky Fried Chicken. That's what would happen if the mood order kicked in. No, I'm not. I'm not. But I don't get the flu either because I'm awesome. Three two three five three eight twenty four twenty three at Chad Benson shows your Twitter. Tweet at us. Somebody tried to steal something, and it is the stupid of the day as much as this is stupid. We'll talk about that straight ahead. Chad Benson Show. The Chad Benson Show. Independent in thoughts and punk rock in life. It's the Chad Benson Show. Those bombs on President Trump's mind in the middle of the night. The president wide awake at 314 a.m. tweeting, funny how lowly rated CNN and others can criticize me at will, even blaming me for the current spate of bombs. Yet when I criticize them, they go wild and scream, it's just not presidential. Yeah. Yeah. I don't think it's presidential, but I don't think the way that they treat you is is as respectful as they've treated other presidents. So there's blame to go around for everybody. The good news is they caught the guy, at least the person they believe to be the guy. Right? They're pretty sure that they have the guy. Christopher Ray, FBI, do you have the guy? We do believe that we've caught the right guy. Uh, but we also know that this is an ongoing investigation and there's a lot of work still to be done. There you go. So, and it's going to take a while. This is going to be one of those things uh, that is going to take a while. You know what? It's some people have been saying who are like, "Oh, were these even really bombs?" Like somehow they're doing everything they can because they they they're 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 Trump loyalists and supporters. And and I will tell you this: I've talked to several people who are huge Trump supporters. They weren't really into politics before, and they've said afterwards they probably won't have anything to do with politics afterwards. It's Trump, 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 Trump. and But they're worried, oh, oh were these even really bombs? Uh, they weren't good bombs, but could they have potentially exploded? I think it was the, you know, could they? Yeah. Even if the devices, and we're still trying to determine whether or not uh, they were functional, as they say. So we're doing all kinds of analysis on that to make a definitive determination. But they did contain energetic material, uh, which, if subjected to the right combination of heat or shock or friction, uh, could be dangerous to the public. And the public should treat any device like that accordingly. Absolutely. 100%. It's over. It's done with as far as they believe they've got the right guy. And uh, he is, uh, well, you know, he's going to see. I have a feeling when all is said and done, uh, if this is the guy, that he's going to see a mental institution potentially before he sees a day in prison. Because I just don't think he's all there. His family doesn't really think he's all there. They call him a lost soul. And then some of the stuff I, I apparently he's made up about his family fighting communism and doing all kinds. It's just really potentially out there. And the, the, they're going to come hard for this guy. And Jeff Sessions talked about it earlier, uh, you know, about political violence. This is a law and order administration. We will not tolerate such lawlessness especially not political violence. There you go. There you go. So uh, good riddance uh, that they caught this guy, and hopefully uh, he can get the help he needs if he is sick. And I do, and, and my, my opinion, my, my dime store opinion from 5,000 trillion miles away from where he currently finds himself is I don't think he's all there. That's just me. He took the rhetoric that was being said, and he ran with it and didn't quite understand the he wasn't in on the joke and the the arguments and understand that that it's not all it appears to be. And I think he's got issues. I really do. Speaking of issues. It is the precursor in many ways to our. Bill of Rights and our Constitution, it is one of the most famous 
And it is absolutely ridiculous. One of the most famous things in the world, documents in the world, and an idiot tried to steal it. A 45-year-old man armed with a hammer has been arrested. Alarms were activated after an attempt was made to smash the glass box surrounding the Magna Carta. Staff were immediately alerted and police were called in. As to the actual document, it's not been damaged. It's the best surviving copy of one of Britain's most influential legal documents dating from 1215. It's regarded by historians as the foundation of constitutional liberty in the English-speaking world. Yes. It is. It is. It is incredible. And what they tried to do back in these days, uh, in those days long ago, uh, in 1215, was essentially they were trying to broker a deal between the rebels and the royals. And and it, it kind of started setting up rules. And it's one of just like our Constitution. They, the politicians cite it today. It's amazing. There's I think there's four copies. We got one came on tour when we were celebrating one of our uh uh, they loaned us one. The Brits did. They loaned us one. It's pretty amazing. They said, you want this for a little while. You guys can use it if you like. And, you know, it's going on tour. But I was talking to producer Phil, and I said, let's just, let's let's play fun here for a moment. All right? So you managed to steal it, or you managed to steal the Constitution for whatever reason I'm, you know let's go national what was that national whatever it was that sh- uh, movie with Nicolas Cage national treasure so let's just say for the sake of argument that you managed to now he wanted to use it for something else but let's just say you're not going to use it for something else so you have one of the most important documents in the history of mankind and I said mankind get over it what are you going to do with it? <laughs> that's, that's, that's my question is, okay, so you have it, what do you do with it? Because you're not, are you taking it to a pawn shop? Is that what you're doing? Probably not. Right? And unless there's some evil person out there that wants to have this and put it in their basement for whatever reason, who are you going to sell it to? It's like people who, in 1994, the Oslo Games, Winter Olympics, on on the opening ceremonies, they broke into the Oslo National Museum and they stole the scream, right? The great the great painting, the scream, and I'm telling Phil, okay, you know, what do you do with it? Because you don't want nobody's going to want it if you're going to buy something, right? So let's just say, for the sake of argument. You buy a, a a painting, and the scream at the time was valued. They couldn't even put a value on it. Probably it ended up being worth well over a hundred million dollars. So you own this thing, and I mean, it gets stolen. So now it's in your possession. Now they held it for ransom, and they got it back within three months. But if what do you do with it? Like if you stole the Mona Lisa, what are you going to do with it? I'm mean, just curious, like. Who's going to buy that? Nobody's going to buy that. Because if you buy it, you want somebody to look at it and know it's yours, right? And people, somebody's going to totally take a selfie with it. Secondly, and this is vitally important, nobody's going to want that heat. If you would have stolen the Magna Carta, the U.S. Constitution, uh, any of the things out there that, that have these values that are just insane, what do you do then? It's like, dude, you guys did great. All right, cool. Now, uh, we're kind of underworldy, and nobody here has any real connections, so we've got one of the most valuable pieces of paper or artwork in the world. Uh, how exactly are we going to uh, get rid of this thing? Oh, yeah. yeah I don't know. I, 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 I didn't think of that far through. I just want to steal it. I like money. <laughs> People are so stupid. Oh my goodness! See, we're we're not the only ones. We we think we're the only ones with stupid, but I will tell you, we're not the. There is stupid everywhere. The globe, nobody has a monopoly on stupid. Not Florida, right? Much I love you, Florida. Come on now, right? Europe has its 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 stupid too. Three two three five three eight twenty four twenty three at Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. You could tweet at us. We have a poll question up, and I like it. Halloween close by, and the question is uh, pretty simple. 
Who's your favorite monster? Of all the movie horror villains, who is your favorite one? Uh, in the modern times, you've got Voorhees, you know, Jason Friday the 13th. You've got Michael Myers from the Halloween. you got Freddy Krueger. Uh, you've got uh, people are saying, well, Dracula and Frankenstein, the Wolfman are big. Godzilla's got several votes. You can tweet at us at Chad Benson Show, 323-538-2423. Uh, love to hear from you. All right, let's take a deep breath. Had all this stuff going on. How about a little nostalgia? Let me take you back to a time when you used to wake up on Saturday morning and you'd sit yourself in front of the TV and you'd turn on the cartoons. Joining us now in a minute is a couple guys put together a book. It's called It's Saturday Morning. And it, it's, it talks about the golden age of cartoons from the 60s to the 90s. It breaks it down from top to bottom. I, I told Phil I get a thousand books a year. This is one of the most interesting books I have ever read. It is incredible. They join us straight ahead right here on The Chad Benson Show. Running with scissors sounds great compared to this. Say The world's a crazy place. It is. And it's totally different than, uh, than it used to be. We see what's going on across the board in politics. Every once in a while, I love to stop and just take a deep breath and Go back to yesterday and remember many great things. And one of those things was Saturday mornings, waking up, having my my tricks and watching cartoons. Joining us now, a couple guys who put together an incredible book. It's called It's Saturday Morning, celebrating the golden era of cartoons from the 60s to the 1990s. Joe Garner and Michael Ashley join us now. And by the way, guys, just to let you know, uh, my love of cartoons is huge. As a kid growing up, not only did I play soccer, but my dream besides that was to be Mel Blanc and Dawes Butler. I got to work with Dawes Butler. So it was, you know, when I, uh, it, it's just incredible. And as I was reading this book and seeing all of this stuff in here, it just, it, it brings back memories. Oh, that's great. Well, that's exactly, we wanted to, uh, we wanted to remind people who were old enough to have experienced, which is, you know, basically younger, I mean, uh, older Xers and younger uh, uh, baby boomers, um, this uh, magical time. I mean, Chad, as you recall, we waited all week. For Saturday mornings and kids yeah. today just don't know what that experience was like. So hopefully the book will give them a taste of that. You said it right. that We waited all week. And I, and I just remember, guys, that, you know, it was one of those things where, like we do now with football, uh, we, Sunday was it. Saturday morning was owned by the cartoons and depending depending on you know how old you were what was your favorite cartoon all of these things we don't have that anymore because we're inundated with it and when you start looking through this you realize a lot of these characters that you just absolutely love and became a huge part of america yeah that's absolutely why no matter what your age no matter what your social demographic was uh no matter how rich or poor you were this is all something that affected people and they could all uh, relate to it, so G.I. Joe, Gummy Bears, all these wonderful characters. And we wanted to bring that back there to a time in which everybody was unified by these three, basically three channels. So this was a very special time, and we wanted to evoke that with this book. Absolutely. Talking to uh, guys who put together a couple a book that's amazing called It's Saturday Morning Celebrating the Golden Era of Cartoons from the 1960s and 1990s. Uh, Joe Garner and Michael uh, Ashley join us here. When you guys started putting this stuff together and you got some of these amazing pictures, and, and the thing I love about it is it's not just the the pictures of you know the people who created these characters and, and the artwork itself. It talks about how long they were on the air, what network, how many episodes. Because like the Archie show, you look at something like that and you think, well, the Archie show was on forever. It was 17 episodes, but in our mind, it was on forever. Mm-hmm. And then you also talk, you have the character voice actors, all of these things. It, it's incredible the way you guys break this down, because like I said, it's part of Americana, but we think to ourselves, wasn't it on for like 25 years? You're like, no, it was on for 17 episodes. You're like, no way. Yeah, it is surprising when you look at some of these classics like uh, Johnny Quest, very, very short runs, but it just is testament to the artistry and to the characters that they created that they really stood the test of time. That Smurf's you know, got a good run, guys. 256 episodes is a good run. Plus, they've had several major motion pictures. When I look at this, though, one of the things that I think kids don't understand is like I was trying to explain the other day to my son, Jack, who's eight years old. Jack, you don't understand. The Transformers were a cartoon. They became a movie. Bumblebee 
was a cartoon first, and the guy, Peter Cullen, who voices the voice of the original, is also the voice in the Transformer movies. These were really cartoons first before movies. I mean, if you look at the Ninja Turtles, that began in 1989, and the G.I. Joe, that, that spawned a whole series of movies as well. But that goes back to a toy that originated around uh, the First World War and the Second World War when it was actually um, a doll. Yeah, as I've gone through this book, a bunch, uh, it's called It's Saturday Morning, Celebrating the Golden Era of Cartoons from the 60s to the 90s. Joe Garner and Michael Ashley join us. You know, one of the things in here for all the cartoon stuff, one thing you guys do have in here is you have Pee Wee's Playhouse, which uh, wasn't strictly a cartoon, if you will, but it was a Saturday morning staple for a lot of people. That's exactly right. right. I'm going to let Michael speak about that because um, it was actually a bit of an arm wrestle between the two of us, Chad, to be honest with you, because there's about a 20 year age difference between the two of us. And so I grew up with the uh, 60s and 70s and part of the 70s live action were Sid and Marty Croft, you know, the, the H.R. Puffin stuff. And uh, I was overruled on those. But with the one possible exception being Pee Wee's Playhouse, but for great reasons, which Michael will explain. Well, yeah, and actually, if you think about it, there was some animation on the Pee Wee's Playhouse. There was the Penny cartoons that featured a little clay girl with pennies for eyes, and she would talk about all the stuff that kids, you know, the, the matter to kids, like their parents, the boys who would bugger at school, how to make toast. In a way, Pee Wee Herman was kind of a, a cartoonist character himself. We couldn't do a book without having Pee Wee's Playhouse in it. Then we moved to the 90s, because I was a 70s guy, again, growing up, and a lot of it, as much as I love the cartoons, it was the Mel Blanks, it was the Dawes Butlers, it was the voice actors that I've always wanted to be, and I have several friends who are big-time voice actors, and, uh, uh, well, and I just love doing these things, it's just the most amazing stuff. <laughs> but you move into, to me, one of the great eras, the 90s, which I think a lot of times gets overlooked, but one of my favorite cartoons, and even when it comes on, I'm flipping around at night sometimes, I'll watch Pinky and the Brain, and I loved Animaniacs, and Pinky in the Brain, and all of those things. If you look at the 90s, shows like Animaniacs, all of these were um, behind Steven Spielberg, but they also kind of followed the lead of the show like The Simpsons. And that was so interesting about the 90s because it was like the cartoons actually grew up in a lot of ways. Yeah, they really, really did. It's called It's Saturday Morning, celebrating the golden era of cartoons from the 1960s and 1990s. Uh, I appreciate you guys coming on. Last questions uh, for both of you. Moving forward, you look at cartoons. Cartoons are so much different. South Park, uh, those guys revolutionized uh, so many things in the way that they've taken stuff on. Family Guy, the same kind of thing. Where do you see cartoons going in, in the future? Because uh, I still love, I watch Family Guy on a regular basis. In fact, I'll be honest with you, I probably watch at least an episode a day because it takes my mind off all the politics and the wackiness. But, uh, uh, moving forward, do we still see a lot of those great cartoons, not only for kids, but like for adults, there's plenty of them out there. And do you think they're going away anytime soon? I agree with you 100 percent. First of all, uh, that was a ritual of mine um, every night to watch an episode of Family Guy with my son. We just laugh. It's just, you know, it's brilliant, brilliant writing, first and foremost. And the characters are so well defined. But, um, I, yeah, no, I, I see cartoons, animation, uh, having a nice, healthy life, you know, well into the future, especially with all the creativity that's coming out of Pixar. And, you know, they, they just seem to keep trying to out outperform and outdo each other. And they'll always sort of mirror uh, our culture as well, which is what they've done. In, if you really look at the writing of these cartoons, it's what they've done uh, throughout their entire history. Absolutely. Absolutely. Guys, I appreciate it. It's Saturday morning celebrating the golden era of cartoons from the 1960s to the 1990s. Joe Garner and Michael Ashley, appreciate you coming on. The book is amazing. And I'm telling everybody out there, the nostalgia alone, just going through some of these and also the craziness of finding out that you thought something was on for 40 years, which it was, but they only did like 20 episodes. And you'll be amazed to find out how many episodes were really done. Appreciate you guys coming on today. Thanks so very much for taking time with us. Thank Thanks, you. Thanks, Appreciate it. At Chad Benson shows your Twitter, C H A D B E N S O N. You know what? Oh God, I'm like looking at Josie Cotton and the Pussycats. I love that, right? Like, and then I'm telling you, man, like, I was surprised at like Scooby Doo. How many episodes of Scooby Doo? The Pink Panther had a nice one, 124 episodes. Josie Cotton, the Pussycats, or Josie and the Pussycats, 16 episodes. That was it. 16. Fat Albert, 110 episodes. Hey, hey, hey. We were not probably just kind of like not. Super Friends had 109 episodes. But a lot of these other ones had very little amount of episodes. It was just crazy. 323-538-2423. At Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. It is the Chad Benson Show. This is the Chad Benson Show.
independent in thought, and punk rock in life. It's the Chad Benson Show. I am pleased to inform you that law enforcement has apprehended the suspect and taken him into custody. Woo! Yes, they have. They have caught him. They have caught him. He has been caught. He is the suspect. Indeed, he is, well, he's an interesting character, to say the least. I mean, everybody's focusing on the van, but there's a lot of other things that people should be focusing on when it comes to it. But the van in itself is is interesting. If you've not seen the van, we've posted on all the interwebs. On, you can go check it out at uh, Chad Benson Show on the old Facebook and uh, Twitter. But it's got pictures of Trump and all of these things all over it. And it's just, it is nuts. He's 56 years old. And they've been tracking this guy for a while. His name is Caesar Sayoc. He's a registered Republican. He's had more than a few run-ins with the laws, been convicted of drug and fraud charges, and also, I guess, has been arrested for threatening to bomb people. And it is a uh, it is good that it is finally coming to an end. The Justice Department confirmed an arrest in connection to the suspected package bombs. The person was caught in the Miami area after court records showed authorities began tracking a cell phone two days ago. The arrest comes the same day authorities learned of two additional suspicious packages, one addressed to Senator Cory Booker of New Jersey, the other addressed to former Director of National Intelligence James Clapper. Kamala Harris, I guess, has got one. And yes, Phil, your favorite Tom Steyer apparently has had one sent to him as well. Uh, they followed this cat. They've known he didn't do a good job. Let's just put it that way. He didn't do a real good job of of covering up his tracks. Investigators followed leads, clues here to South Florida. We're told that they were actually able to find forensic evidence on at least one of those packages that had been mailed, as well as images from the U.S. Postal Service of the mail being processed. And that's what brought them here to this packaging center. This is where those packages are sorted for most of the southern part of the state of Florida. Yeah, and they arrested him at uh, in front of an auto zone. I don't know if he worked there or not. I'm getting conflicting reports about that. But they arrested him there, took his van into, uh, you know, immediately took his van away and took him into custody. And now it's the it's the blame game. Like, that should be, what are you guys going to do? It's the blame game. It's your fault. No, 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 it's your fault. You caused all this. No, you caused all this. No, it's your fault. No, it's your fault. And that's what you're going to get for the next several hours is it's your fault. No, it's your fault. No, it's your fault. No, it's your fault. Nobody's going to say, you know, what? maybe we all had a little part to play in this. Nobody's going to say any of that. Nobody's going to say, you know, the rhetoric has been going really, it's been, it's been, it's been ramped up lately. Nobody is going to say that. Instead, you're going to get uh, the 24 hour news cycle and through the weekend it's going to sound like this. Donald Trump unleashed the dogs of hatred in this country from the day he declared he was running for president. And they've been snarling and barking at each other ever since. And it's just inevitable. There are going to be acts of violence that grow out of that. Let's remember, if we're going to point all kinds of fingers, and look, I've said, and I will continue to say it, no matter how many of you send me horrible texts, Trump has a part to play in this. Now, he's not responsible for a human being's actions. But he has a part to play with the rhetoric that he pushes, and he's not going to change it. If you think he's going to change it, he's not. He is not going to change his attitude whatsoever. He's going to continue. He's going to go out, and his next time he has a chance, he's going to say something awful. He's going to say both sides have a part to play, which is right, because the other side doesn't want to. But remember, last year when there was a shooting of Steve Scalise and all of these things happened, that guy was a Bernie supporter. And I said at the time, and I'll say it again, Bernie had nothing to do with that. That guy actions were on him this guy's actions on him but you also need to take the temperature of the room and you also need to understand when you say things and the fights go on and the media has a part to play in this that maybe just maybe not everybody gets it right not everybody gets the crazy now not everybody can read through the the things you say not everybody goes ah you're 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 ratcheting it up a little bit Not everybody gets that. No. 
But Trump, this is all Trump. This this for the next 24, 48, 72 hours until we get to Monday and a new cycle comes because then we'll be off and getting ready for the final week of, of, of run up to the midterms. This is going to be all Trump's fault. This was a mass assassination attempt, including two former presidents, a former vice president of the United States. The person who is responsible for sending bombs to all of those people is the person who mailed the bombs. Donald Trump did not mail the bombs, but he created the atmosphere where a sick person would look at those individuals and see an enemy. We haven't seen anything like it since the night Abraham Lincoln was assassinated. Yeah, but when you've got your then presidential candidate on the left calling half the nation deplorables, they don't have to look far to find enemies because guess what? You're calling them enemies too. Everybody's got a part to play. And this is the thing that drives me crazy is there's nobody who wants to stand up and said, you know what? You're right. Now, I don't like what Trump does. I've told you that. You listen to the show. Try to be a level head and as real as possible. I think that the stuff that he says at times is absolute crap. He says it. He he looks at a crowd and he says whatever he can to rev the crowd up. And he doesn't realize that that's going to go elsewhere and not just what's happening there. And that some people don't quite get that what he's saying, he's putting a little mustard on it, if you will. And some people take it to heart. But everybody on the left acts like they're, they, they've got no part to play in this. And we're trying to figure out well, who started this. It doesn't matter who started it. Why are we still fighting? You know, one of the funny things, I don't know, and producer Phil, you, you, you ever watched Family Guy when the, when the giant rooster and Peter fight? Oh, yeah, that's incredible. And they'll fight for like five minutes. And they forget, they'll stop and go, why do we start fighting again? That's exactly what this is. Both sides are blaming each other for what I don't know. How about stop saying, it's your fault, it's your fault, and somebody just goes, okay, fine, you know, it'll be my fault. Uh, but we're going to stop now. And there's you can have political discourse. You can. You you can do that. You can have political discourse. You can, there's always going to be name calling and stuff like that. The difference is it's gone from you know it's gone from a five to an eleven. And it went from two candidates were arguing and fighting with each other to let's include the audience as my team versus your team. And that's where this has gone, to me, has gone too far. Trump makes no pretense about being the commander in chief of all of the country, being president of all of the people, including the people that voted against him. He is, in effect, a tribal chieftain who has declared war on half of the country. But the Democrats called half of him and his supporters what? What do they call them? Deplorables. That's not good. Right? That's not good. I've got so many people that have texted me this morning and say, no, this person's crazy. And, and, and you know, this person's obviously somebody who was, who, who, who was on Trump's side. And they said, you know what, though? We're sick and tired of being always called racist homophobic, Islamophobic, bigots, all of these things by people in the media 24-7. I get that. They forget that there's a part to play. Everybody's got a part. Why is it so hard for everybody to say, we've got a part to play? Chad, do you have a part to play? Absolutely. There were times when I said things, when I I look back and say, I shouldn't have said that. That was awful. 110%. 110%. Absolutely. But you know how this is going to be spun is the left's going to come out and say it's all your faults, 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 all your fault. The right's going to come out and say he's crazy, which is probably there's some truth in that. The van alone says a little bit off. Uh, and I don't care what side of the aisle you're on, and I don't care if there's you were you were it, it, not political at all. It says you're a little crazy. And the and the second thing is I've already getting hundred false flag narratives. Just, I don't want to hear it. I don't want to hear it. It's old. Get over it. Like, get over it. It's time to say, for whatever reason, th- this is the thing that, that makes me laugh. We're so busy trying to win something that there's no nothing to win. And we're so busy trying to demonize the other side. That rather than just say, I don't care whose fault it is, can we just fix the problem? 
Nobody wants to do that, right? Like if you spill milk and it's on the ground and both of you are reaching for it and you spilled it, instead of going, well, let's just clean it up, you know, I'll I'll grab some napkins, you grab the, the glass and let's just clean this thing up. Instead, both sides are looking at each other, arguing on who did it and nothing's changing. It's still not getting fixed. It's still not getting cleaned up. Because both sides have the need to always be right, always be seen as morally justified, always be seen as the winner. And in things like this, I got news for you. Both of y'all losing. 323-538-2423. At Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. You can tweet at us. Love to hear from you. All right, guys. I want to talk about smart things and not so smart things. All right? All right? I want, I want you guys to understand this. Smart things are available to you out there if you use them. And there are some things that are not so smart, right? Like, say, for instance, you need to hire somebody and you do the same thing over and over again and you have to sift through hours and hours of resumes, make horrible phone calls, and not find what you're looking for. That's not smart. Not good use of time. Smart. ZipRecruiter.com slash Benson. That's not just smart. That's genius. <sighs> yeah. ZipRecruiter. Doesn't wait around and 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 you post your job and wait for those candidates to come to you. They go out with their powerful matching technology, identify people with the right skills, education, experience for the job that you have. Then they actively invite them to apply. So you get a quality candidate through the site fast. ZipRecruiter rank rank number two? No, rank number three? No, rank number one by employers in the USA. Boom. What do you think of those apples? Now here's something else that's smart. Post your job for free right now. It's on me, kids. It's on me. Because I love you. Go to ZipRecruiter.com slash Benson. ZipRecruiter.com slash B-E-N-S-O-N. ZipRecruiter.com slash Benson. ZipRecruiter is, boom, the smartest way to hire. At Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. C-H-A-D-B-E-N-S-O-N. It is the Chad Benson Show. Welcome to the Alt Middle, where solutions live and ignorance dies. The Chad Benson Show. The bottom line is that Americans must unify, and we must show the world that we are united together in peace and love and harmony as fellow American citizens. There is no country like our country, and every day we are showing the world just how truly great we are. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. We do need to unify. But here's a, and this is the thing. And when I talk to, to people, is it's okay to have a differing point of view. It is, and it's okay to even at times argue. The problem isn't so much that; it's the way that we see each other, and we no longer see each other because of our tribalism, because we're cloaked in the red and the blue or whatever it is. We no longer see each other as human beings, as Americans. We see each other as an enemy. That's the that's the issue right there. That is the 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 big issue. I'll say this. Wrestling fans get it. (laughs) Wrestling fans, they understand that it's it's theatrics of all the things to turn to go wrestling wrestling fans. Are you saying wrestling fans get it? Well, yeah, don't you guys think that it's uh, it's fake? Well, of course it's fake. We know that. Are you, are you sure? Well, yeah, if you didn't think it was fake, you're an idiot. You get it. Political wrestling, which is what we have now, they don't always get it. The emotion is so real. But, but you know, when, we, when we talk about unifying, it's not about like, hey, let's all come together and hold hands. It's like, hey, can we just agree for a second, to not be Richards to one another and that we'll treat each other like human beings and we can vigorously defend our positions and we can fight for the things that we think are right. And then, you know, but at the end of the day, we can at least part as friends and say, all right, you know what? I didn't convince you. You didn't convince me. But, you know, no hard feelings. Oh, God, it's just so... 
It is so funny. It is. I, I just, it just, because I get it. I'm getting it now. I'm getting people. I mean, the minute this came out, and I did a video, and you can check it out on Facebook, and, and as I'm doing it, I'm getting people that are typing in, hey, Chad, MSN is the enemy, or CNN started this, and, it's, and I'm just like, oh, God. Why does everybody have to be right all the time? Like, why is there, I get that every day with, and I'm sure a lot of you do too, on your like, you know, if you misspell something, you know, I'll do a hundred things at once, man. I'll be tweeting, I'll be doing a video, I'm doing the show, I'm doing all those kind of things, and I'll put something out there and it, and and I'll misspell a word or I'll miss a, an, you know, I'll miss a comma or something. And somebody's like, you missed that. And I'm just like, wow, this is why you have no friends. Nobody wants to hang out with you because you always have to be right person. Always have to be right person is always alone. We're going out tonight. Who's going, Jim? I uh, can't, man. The guy's, the guy's always got to one-up me, and he's always got to be right. Can't hang out with that guy. That guy's no fun. That guy is no fun. Everybody's got one like that. And if you don't have a friend like that, it's you. If you don't have a friend like that, it's you. Three two three five three eight twenty four twenty three at Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. So I've uh, I've got a uh, poll up, and it's about monsters because it's Halloween time, and Halloween came out last week, which will dominate again at the box office, probably do about thirty five million dollars. Uh, what's the what's the monster? What is the one? What's the slasher? The monster? The creature that you would say is the best of all time? Uh, and we gave you a few choices, and then you can write yours in uh, right now. Michael Myers, number one. Uh, number two, Freddy Krueger. Number ten, Jason Voorhees. And I've got a lot of like Creature in the Black Lagoon, Dracula, uh, things of that na- nature that are, people are, are are chiming in to. And it's funny because Freddy changed everything, didn't he? Because Freddy Krueger, unlike Michael Myers and Jason, Freddy talked. He had a personality. That's what separated him from the other two, who were maybe more menacing. But Freddie brought personality. 323-538-2423 at Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. It's Chad Benson Show. The Chad Benson Show. Independent in thoughts and punk rock in life. It's the Chad Benson Show. In a statement, NBC says, quote, Megyn Kelly today is not returning. Next week, the 9 a.m. hour will be hosted by other Today co-anchors. This after reports the past couple of days that Kelly and NBC were talking about her exit. On Tuesday, Kelly came under fire during a discussion about Halloween costumes and blackface. Okay, back when I was a kid, that was okay as long as you were dressing up as like a character. Kelly apologized the next day, but many have felt Kelly and NBC were never a good fit and that NBC wasn't happy with her ratings. See? It's not just, you got to read into things, the reality that's there. The, it's easy to jump on the politically correct thing because there's this weird, you know, group of people that will arbitrarily decide on social media if you should or shouldn't exist anymore. And they will try to do everything they can to destroy you. And NBC was looking for a reason to jump. They were. They weren't happy. They weren't happy. That's what it is. Right. Like they 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 weren't happy with a lot of stuff that had nothing to do with what she said that day. If her show was number one and she was absolutely killing it in the ratings and then in the revenue, this would have been. She's sorry. And then we move on. Wasn't that way. In politically correct world, I think we all know that there is large swaths of people who are waiting to attack at any moment anybody they deem to be on the wrong side of political correctness, and they'll do anything they possibly can to destroy 
people's lives. They didn't really need a lot of help with this because NBC was ready to jump ship, if you will, on this a while ago. She was never liked there. She didn't befriend a lot of people inside of NBC. She came over with a bit of a chip on her shoulder and $70 million price tag, and she had a tough time living up to it, and she didn't endear herself to many people, so it wasn't a hard move for her. And now she'll figure out what she's going to do. She's going to get paid a boatload of money, and she'll go back to somewhere. She may decide, I'll do it myself, right? I don't want this stuff. I got enough money. I can do some stuff myself. She may decide, I'll go back to Fox. You know, they, they appreciate me there. And they're not going to try to have me do recipes when I'd rather do some harder journalism. And maybe they'll let me do some other stuff. And who knows? Who knows? 323-538-2423. At Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. You can tweet at us. We've been following along. Of course, they, they've got a suspect. Cesar uh, uh, Sacone, I guess. I, it's a, it's a, Sayoc. Uh, the, I, I, you know, the saying these people's names, it's like I don't, I don't want to give the person any credo to what he's done you know uh who is he don't know lived in new york has a criminal past has a crazy van with mike pence and trump stuff all over it and cnn sucks and all of these things has a lot of issues and over the next 24 to 48 hours we'll find out more and more as they dig deeper and deeper into what all of this is and then it's going to be, uh, you know, a race to whatever social media or platform that you have to blame the other side for something. Uh, the good news is, is there was none of the bombs worked. And, and many of them, from what I'm understanding, they they were weren't even operable. They couldn't even have exploded if they, you know, it was poorly done. His DNA was easily traced. They've been following his phone for a couple days. They picked up on it pretty much right away. And uh, a few more bombs today. James Clapper, apparently. Uh, Kamala Harris has an interesting, some sort of package. I don't know if that's for certain, but it looks like it. And then Tom Steyer, who is the uh, the billionaire in California, who is spending a ton of money trying to impeach President Trump. Uh, so it's, it's but it's, it looks like at least at this point in time, they've got the person and good riddance to, to bad rubbish. Now let's talk about things that are happening continuously. We are moving towards the midterms and there's still something out there called a caravan and it's coming here and it's very, very interesting. Remember this guy, I don't know if you guys ever heard of this guy before, but this was back a few years ago that he said this. We are a generous and welcoming people here in the United States, but those who enter the country illegally and those who employ them disrespect the rule of law, uh, and they are showing disregard for those who are following the law. Uh, we simply cannot allow people to pour into the United States undetected, undocumented, unchecked, and circumventing the line of people who are waiting patiently, diligently, and lawfully uh, to become immigrants in this country. Producer Phil, have you ever heard of that guy? He goes by the name of, let me see, he, at that time, he was called Senator Barack Obama? Did he go and do anything? He sounds familiar. Um, I, let me give it a Google. Okay, you give it a Google. Oh, yeah, that's right. He used to be President of the United States. So that was when he was Senator. So we've got all these people coming here. And, of course, things have changed because uh, you can change your mind if you believed in, you know, uh, a traditional marriage and you were a, a, a Barack Obama or the Clintons and you could change your mind. to I, I've grown. And if you, you OK, that's fine. It is what it is. But I think what he said there was 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 fairly, fairly good. And we've got these people coming here and in we've got to ask our questions. What in God's name are we going to do? with this because we've got to start doing something don't we we just can't continue on the way we've been doing it illegal aliens should not be treated the same as people who entered the u.s legally i voted uh, uh numerous times when i was a senator to spend money to build a uh a barrier to try to prevent um, illegal immigrants from coming in. Uh, we simply cannot allow people to pour into the United States undetected, undocumented, unchecked. All right. So there's that. So so we voted. Not only is it that Barack Obama fellow, I'm I'm he I'm sure he went on to do something great. But that other lady, uh, uh, I think her name was uh, Hillary Clinton. Uh, she she did some stuff, too. And Chuck Schumer, of course, as we all know of of the Chucky movies fame, they there's all that. So those are three of them. 
They've said stuff like that. The fact is they're coming here and they've all jumped ship, if you will, as far as what side that this now doesn't help them to be this way. It only hurts them. So they've got to go to the other side and say, no, 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 no. No government in the region seems interested at all in stopping the migrants as they move toward Texas. Once they arrive in Texas, cross the Rio Grande River, the group will inevitably be met by left-wing lawyers who specialize in manipulating our dysfunctional immigration system. And they are all but ensured permanent residency in this country if history is any guide. And that, of course, is the main reason so many of them are coming now. One of our major political parties strongly supports all of this. That's not speculation. They say it out loud often. Yeah, they do. When they didn't. When they didn't say it out loud, but they said that it's not right, now they say it out loud that it is right, or that they at least can... It goes back to the the, the spilt milk analogy I gave you earlier. Both sides reach for a glass of milk, it spills on the floor. Uh, We all know it needs to be cleaned up, but instead of actually doing anything about it, they argue over it, and it just sits there. That's kind of what this is. Both sides... In general, and there are some outliers in certain areas, but in general, we kind of, you know, we all kind of want the same thing, right? We want comprehensive immigration reform. We just differ on the way that we think it should be done, right? We we differ on some of these things. And this is one of those things where, depending on the time of the year, what the weather's like, which way the wind's blowing, that people jump to side to side. And the Democrats made no bones about it. They are now part of, hey, come on in. We're fine with this. Where at one time they used to say, no, you can't do this. We are a country that our strength has always been that we are a, 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 a tolerant country, that we are welcoming in particular of those who have fled harm. The people of Central America, many are at risk. If they qualify for asylum, we believe there should be a process in which that case can be heard in a fair manner protecting the individuals. What's the Democratic Party's message about the caravan? We are a nation of laws, and the laws that are on the books deal with issues of refugee and asylum status. And our laws require that Mm -hmm. people be treated with dignity and given that process. Yeah. So they want to welcome. That's it. It's it's a political game and it's frustrating. And and as I've talked to just as many people on the left and the right that want to see something done. And and like I say, this is where we differ on what we, we want the same thing. We want immigration reform that's done right. Most people I talk to on the right, they're 99% 99% of them are like, yeah, look, I don't care about the DACA kids. What happened, how they were brought here, That they should be allowed to stay here. For all intents and purposes, they're as American as anybody else. Th- they want immigration reform done right. And they know that the wall's not going to be the end-all to be-all, and they realize that it's much bigger than that, and they want to see the laws enforced. The people I talk to on the left, the the people who are common sense, the 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 middle of us the exhausted majority they want the same thing they may not agree on the wall but they don't want to see people flood in here they don't want to see this continue to happen they don't want to see the visa program completely ignored the way it has been they don't want to see the ports completely ignored the way they we differ on what we should do one side maybe wants to crack down a lot harder The other side wants uh, maybe not the crackdown as hard. Both sides want to see employers held accountable. It's just how do we get there? We differ on the path. We do. We've got to start doing something, though. Because now I hear there's a third caravan on the way here. And you're just like, a third? A third caravan now? Uh, But let me me give you a snapshot of what's going to happen. They're going to arrive, give or take, last week in November, most likely the first week in December. It won't be the size it is now because it'll have start to break up the closer it gets the border because they're going to start to splinter off Arizona, California, those kind of things, and nothing will get done. And a good majority of these people will end up here in America. They'll be giving a date to go to court, of which a majority will show up, but it won't be for a few years. And who knows what will happen in that time. 323-538-2423. At Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. Tweet at us. Casper, Casper, Casper. Last night as I traveled, and many of you have been listening, know that. Uh, I slept on the bed. That was four. 
for sake of argument, awful. Bad. Horrible. I should have slept on rocks on a ground. It would have been better. My back hurts today. My legs hurt today. I didn't have my Casper. That's what Casper does for me. Not only do I sleep cool, which is amazing, but also what it does for my body because of all the years of sports. You guys, my knees are so beat up from playing soccer and running around in Europe. I tell everybody the hardest thing I've ever done when I was playing soccer in Europe is running in the mud and the amount of mud that is on your shoes in the fields were horrible. My knees are so beat up from that, and my back is as well. When I sleep on my Casper, I feel amazing. Here's what they're doing. A 100-day test in your own home. You get the mattress. It comes in this little box. You're like, how does this happen? Do you have to add water? Nope. You just open up. Boom. Out it comes. Then this is where the excitement comes in, right? And and it is, is really insane. You can try it for 100 nights in your own home. And if you don't like it, they'll come pick it up and refund your money. No questions asked. What? It's a win-win. That's what Casper does for you. Try it risk-free right now. Go to Casper.com. Use code Chad. It's going to save you some money right there. 50 bucks on the purchase of selected mattresses. Casper.com. Code Chad. Casper.com. Code Chad. Save yourself $50 right there. Casper.com. Terms and conditions apply. At Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. C-H-A-D-B-E-N-S-O-N. Wrap it up. You're useless. Fact of the day. Straight ahead. Chad Benson Show. You go, boy. This isn't about right or left. This is just about right and wrong. Right you are, Chad. <laughs> the Chad Benson Show. <laughs> oh. Phil and I have been laughing because his, uh, Megan Kelly was let go today by uh, NBC. We were, you know, everybody's pulling out the great Carl Malone and Jimmy Kimmel. And if you guys have never heard any of this, Jimmy Kimmel does a good Carmel. I think I do a good Carmel. And if you guys don't know Carmel, he's a great basketball player, played predominantly with the Utah Jazz, Utah Jazz. Carmel like score basketball points, puts the ball in the hoop, go down to the hoop, and he put it in there, and then and there's a check in the mail. And Carl talked, he was hilarious. He was this, he's this hilarious guy, loves 18 wheelers and hunting, and he's just, he's hilarious. And Carl Malone uh, was spoofed by Jimmy Kimmel in full blackface, in the full thing. Utah Jazz uniform in the whole nine yards. I think it was on the Man Show, right? On that one? Yeah, it was. Do you have some of it, Phil? Sometime at night, Carl Malone look up in sky and say, what the hell going on up there? Do UFO live on other planet, phoning home like E.T.? Call me alone, read on TV about white people getting deducted by aliens, sticking all kind of hell up their butt. And that's a damn thing. Now, call me alone, never seen no flying saucer himself, but if he do, that's going to be a spooky time. That's why call me alone say, government got to step up and give 102% to keeping them little green men off this here earth. Because the day them dudes stick something up, call me alone, but that's going to, well... That ain't going to be no good time for nobody, especially Carl Malone butt. <laughs> so, and he does it in full blackface. And they've got, you know, not just Jimmy Kimmel, you have Fallon as well. And as I've been explaining to people all day, who some of people have sent me this, some people have talked about it. Look, it, it has nothing to do with what she said. It has nothing to do with that. This has all to do with they're not happy with the ratings and they're not happy they overpaid her and they're not happy with the return on investment. That's what this is in the end. Right? They weren't happy she came from Fox and there was a lot of, there was a lot of stank on her if you will because of the Fox. You got can't get that stuff off. It's the way that there was a lot of issues there that had nothing to do with this just happened to be the perfect time for them to step away from her and they used it. They but don't think that they weren't looking for something. I mean, since she's been over there, the talk has been how can they get rid of her because it ha- didn't start out good and it started out bad and it continued to get worse. But from the other side point of view, this is what pisses people off who are conservative or who are sick and tired of the political correctness is why if a Republican does something or says something 
and everybody takes it and runs with it inside of control. This happens and nobody, everybody on the left wants to have a pass. Like morally, they're superior, so they should be able to have a free pass at any of this, even though they've done something. Right. Jimmy Kimmel has become the most politically correct person out there. And Jimmy Kimmel's not. In Los Angeles, he comes on Kevin and Bean every year at Christmas does Santa Carl. And I know he does it begrudgingly. But why? That's what people say on the right. Why do they get a pass? Right. Why is it that lady from the New York Times, the new uh, tech editor or whatever, gets to say all of these horrible things and somehow they get to have a pass on it when somebody else says it who would happen to have an R by their name? I was telling producer Phil, you know what? I think I'm just going to tell everybody I'm a Democrat from now on so I can say any of the things I want to say and go, I'm a Democrat and just get away with it. Maybe that's the plan. I don't know, but it is frustrating and I understand people's frustration. By the way, I love Santa Carl and I love Carl Malone because he have fun. He allowed to score basketball points. And when he does, he gets checks in the mail, and that is good. 323-538-2423, at Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. Here's your useless fact today, a little fun. Queen turned down performing at Live Aid. They eventually gave in. Freddie said, if we do this, I want us to be the greatest rock and roll band in the world and show the world that. They practiced for seven days. What came out of that is arguably the greatest 20 minutes in the history of rock and roll, and if you've never seen it, check it out. At Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. Have yourself a wonderful weekend back to do it again on monday night night jack this is the chad benson show